Welcome to Book Root Readings, your channel for classic, nature, and living children's books. Click the subscribe button to be notified of new readings. Enjoy the story! North American Indians by Marie and Douglas Gorsline The Indians were the first people to come to America. They came from Asia thousands of years ago, probably hunting for food. By the time Columbus landed in the New World in 1492, millions of Indians lived in many different places and spoke many languages. Columbus thought he had come to India, so he called the people he met here Indians. But each Indian tribe had a name in its own language. When the Europeans began to settle North America, their ships landed in the east. Slowly, the settlers moved westward, looking for more land. They met Indian tribes wherever they went. Sometimes they were all friendly, and they taught each other many things. But often, they fought over land, and many people died. Finally, the Indian tribes lost most of their land to the settlers. This book tells how some of those tribes lived when the European settlers first came. The map shows where the tribes lived. The first settlers met Algonquian tribes who hunted and fished along the Atlantic coast. The men built dome-shaped wigwams of poles, which the women covered with bark or mats, leaving a hole to let out smoke. From clamshells, the Indians made beads called wampum, which they sewed onto belts and deerskin clothing. Wampum was sometimes used for money. The Wampanoag Indians taught the settlers how to grow corn and squash. The name Seminole means runaway. The Seminole Indians ran away from their farmlands in Georgia when the settlers came. They moved into the Florida swamps, where they hunted and fished. Because the weather was warm, the Seminoles built houses without walls, called chickies. In marshy places, they built their houses on high stilts. Osceola was a Seminole chief who would not give up his land to the European settlers. Five tribes made up the Iroquois nation of the eastern Great Lakes. This is an Onondagan village surrounded by a sturdy log fence. The Iroquois grew many kinds of corn and hunted game for food and hides. They lived in long houses made of poles covered with elm tree bark. Many families lived in one house, but each had its own cooking fire. The Algonquian tribes of the Western Great Lakes were called the people of the Calumet. A Calumet is a peace pipe, which many Indians smoked when they greeted each other. Here is a small band of Ojibwe's. Because their land was not good for farming, they traveled from place to place, hunting and fishing. In late summer, riding in lightweight birch bark canoes, they gathered the wild rice that grew in the rivers and streams. The Great Plains of North America lie between the Mississippi River and the Rocky Mountains. The Plains Indians lived by hunting buffalo. Assiniboine tribesmen hunted on foot. In winter, men wearing snowshoes chased the buffalo into deep snow where they were easily captured. The Indians made warm robes out of the buffalo's thick winter fur. The Indians of the Northern Plains built sleds and toboggans, which they used for work and play. Dogs pulled heavily loaded sleds, and dog sleds were used in the buffalo hunts. The Cheyenne tribe came to the plains to hunt for buffalo. When the hunt was over, they enjoyed sports. Their sleds had runners made of buffalo ribs, which slid easily over ice and snow. The Mandans were one of the first Plains tribes to use horses. 
Horses were first brought to America by Spanish settlers. The Mandans lived in earth lodges made of log posts thickly covered with hard-packed grass and dirt. An earth lodge was so strong that people could sit on the roof. One lodge could shelter 40 people, and some men kept their favorite horses inside too. Mandan men hunted buffalo. The women grew corn and beans. The Mandans built boats of buffalo hide stretch over a light wood frame. Horses made it possible for the Plains Indians to follow whole herds of buffalo, something they had not been able to do on foot. With horses to carry heavy loads, tribes such as the Sioux would roll up their teepees and follow the herds wherever they went. After the coming of the horse, tribes from all over came to the plains to live and hunt. They could kill so many buffalo in just one hunt, they did not need to grow food anymore. Plains Indians ate buffalo meat as their main food. They made clothing, moccasins, blankets, shields, and teepees out of buffalo hides. The bones, horns, and hoofs were used for tools, weapons, cups, and rattles. The Blackfeet were skilled buffalo hunters. The paintings on their teepees usually told the story of a man's bravery in a hunt. Indian children did not go to school. When they were small, they rode horses with their parents. Boys played at hunting with small bows and arrows. Girls helped with cooking and curing buffalo hides. With a mortar and pestle, the women ground a mixture of dried buffalo meat, fat, and berries into a food called pemmican. Pemmican could be carried from one camp to another and stored for months without spoiling. The tribes of the Southwest were called Pueblo Indians by the Spanish settlers who first met them. The word Pueblo means small town in Spanish. The oldest Pueblo tribe, the Anasaza, lived in small towns on the sides of steep cliffs. Their homes were built like apartment houses, one room on top of another. Sometimes they were several stories high. The homes of the Anasaza had no doors or windows. Instead, they climbed ladders to the roof and entered their homes through a hole there. If an enemy attacked them, they pulled the ladders indoors. The cliff dwellers' homes were well protected, but the people had to climb up and down steep cliff sides to fetch water and get to their fields of corn. The earliest Pueblos built their homes of poles and stones heavily plastered with a mixture of clay and straw called adobe. Adobe was very hard when it dried. The men held secret meetings in underground rooms called kivas. Many pueblos continued to live as the cliff dwellers had for thousands of years. Others built their towns on the tops of high mesas or on flatlands close to their fields. Farming is not easy in such dry country, but the Hopi Indians grew corn and cotton. They wove the cotton into cloth. Hopi women made beautiful pottery and baskets. Some of the dances of the Pueblo Indians are still danced today, just as they have been for many hundreds of years. The dancers usually form their circle in a plaza, the people watch from the roofs above and listen to the drums beating. The Pueblos dance to make the rain fall, to make corn grow plentiful, to thank the spirits for good crops, and to cure sickness. All of the men's songs and steps are carefully taught to the boys when they are old enough to join the secret meetings in the kivas. Two warlike tribes from the north drifted into the areas of the southwest and began to raid the peaceful pueblos. The Apaches were usually looking for food. They also took horses from the Spanish settlers. 
Apache women built brush huts and gathered wild nuts and seeds. The Navajo tribe did not continue raiding. They settled down to grow crops and raise sheep. From wool, they made beautiful blankets, for which they are still famous today. A Navajo house is called a hogan. It is made of several poles covered with a thick layer of hard-packed brush and earth. The Indians of the northwest coast had an endless supply of fish from the ocean and animals and wood from the great forests. They built large plank houses without using nails. Some of these are standing today. From huge logs, they carved totem poles, which told the history of a family. This Kwakloodle village is holding a feast called a potlitch. During such a feast, a chief would give away food, carved wooden boxes, and woven blankets to show his guests from another village how rich and powerful he was. The Nootka Indians were skilled whalers and boat builders. They built their canoes from huge hollowed out logs. A whale could easily overturn one of these boats. But when a chief's harpoon struck a whale, the men quickly rowed away, dragging the huge animal along until it was too tired to fight. Each year, the rivers and streams of the northwest coast fill up with salmon. The Salish fisherman had a special place of his own, from which he caught salmon with a net. During the salmon fishing season, a man could catch enough fish to feed his family for a whole year. Many American words, including the names of states, cities, towns, and rivers, come from the Indians of North America, who spoke many different languages. When one tribe met another on the plains, they often did not speak each other's language. They made up a way of talking with their hands, called sign language, which all the Plains Indians understood. They could also send messages across a great distance using smoke signals. TP Together How many? Horse Short See Done Die Challenge Leave Drink Dog Yes Work, water, fire, sign language, saddle, Indian. Camp is here. Help, I'm lost. Come meet here.